Good evening. With its rugged, isolated coastline and Arthurian legends, Cornwall is a classic setting for tales of the supernatural. Tonight, both our encounters are set in this distant corner of the country. We'll be following the work of a man who's been kept busy in a Cornish village. His unique job, a Church of England exorcist. More of that later. Now, anyone looking down at the Earth would see a planet that is only one-third land. The rest is water. They'd see billions of creatures populating the land, but hidden from view is life under the sea. We know more about the moon than we do about what's to be found miles below the surface of the great oceans. When we talk of alien life, our eyes move to the stars. Considering our ignorance of the deep, perhaps that is where we should be looking. Cornwall has long been associated with myth and mystery. With a coastline stretching over 250 miles, many of the stories are inevitably linked to the sea. Sailors the world over have spoken of giant sea serpents, and Cornwall is no exception. In 1876, the West Britain newspaper reported that fishermen from Falmouth had found a huge sea snake coiled around their lobster pots, but had thrown it back into the sea. In the course of her researches into local history, writer Sheila Bird has come across many tales of strange sea beasts. There have been sightings around these shores for hundreds of years, and a lot in this century, particularly in the first decade of the century when the early steamships were around, and some of them were seen from the decks of the early steamships. Sightings of a mysterious marine animal known locally as Morgwa, Cornish for sea monster, continue to be reported along the coast. The village of Helford Passage lies on the banks of the Helford River, a few miles south of Falmouth. In 1979, Carrie Ham moved into one of the old Coast Guard's cottages. Early one June morning, she noticed something strange out in the bay. I looked out of the window and I saw what I thought was a yacht on its back. I thought, oh my goodness, I wonder if there's anybody on board. I looked again, and it sank. And then it suddenly up came this thing like a big arm, shaking something at the end of it. Down, gone. But after that, I became very interested, and every time I saw an article, or even a cutting about it, I kept it, and I've got a scrapbook, and it's filled with all the, the accounts. Witnesses continued to come forward. One of them was Tony Doc Shields, a local artist. He claims that it was here at Parsons Beach that one November day he saw Morgwa. The thing was there, a small head that rose up on a long neck and then one hump behind it, two humps behind it, and then the third hump came up and it moved very smoothly along the river here and then turned and went out towards the bay and dropped down. Doc says he took these photographs, but without a telephoto lens, they lacked detail. His story, too, was met with scepticism. People accuse me of inventing it, except that a lot of other people were seeing it as well. I know what I've seen, and it doesn't matter whether they believe me or not. The credibility of other witnesses like Sheila Bird is less easily undermined. I'm a writer, and I'm a writer of non-fiction. I don't go, I'm not a person for practical jokes or anything like that. Seven miles to the northeast of Falmouth is the village of Port Scatho. In July 1985, Sheila Bird and her brother, an environmental scientist, were walking along the clifftop above the village when her brother spotted something out to sea. Sheila, what's that? Whatever is it? There was this uh, gigantic sea creature with a small head, a long neck, and an enormous hump. It's a, it's a monstrous thing. The very first thought that entered my head is, my God, it's escaped from the pages of a storybook. It's a sort of mottled grey. I would say it was swan-like, it was gliding. The shape and appearance was totally different from anything that we're familiar with. Some months after the sighting, I consulted two paleontologists. I only had to say a few words, and they both said to me, you don't have to say any more. 
we know exactly what you've seen. These are the descendants of the plesiosaur, which were thought to have been extinct millions of years ago. This theory is seen by some zoologists as the only credible explanation for the existence of such creatures. It's not an identical fit, but you wouldn't expect it to be. If it was identical, I'd have great suspicion. Whatever this creature is, if it is a plesiosaur, it's had 64 million years of evolution working upon it. One man who knows the sea better than most is George Vinicum. He's been a fisherman off the Cornish coast for over 40 years. In July 1976, George set off from Falmouth for a day's fishing with a friend, John Cock. Beautiful day, clear, flat calm, nothing on the water. Just a clear, beautiful morning. Two hours out at sea, George noticed something in the water. John! Come here, quick! I think a boat's capsized. Look over there! What do you reckon? Yeah, it could be a boat. Get closer. I suppose we're about half a mile or more off of this thing at the time. Steam towards it. We could see it was no boat. The devil is it? You know, it didn't come roaring and her jaws open or nothing like that. The old boy was quite content to look at us as we was looking at him. We've seen whales and we've seen dolphins and all that sort of thing, but this was nothing like that at all. This was, what, well, like a prehistoric monster. And there was no doubt about it. It was something different to what I've ever seen before, and larger than ever I've seen before. We had a 32 foot boat, and it was a piece of boat. The two men returned to Falmouth, reluctant to talk about their extraordinary encounter. But word of their sighting of a strange sea creature soon got out. A couple of days after, the local paper came down and interviewed us and asked us what we saw. That started the old bull rolling. Soon afterwards, George Vinicom had a visitor from London. Mr. Vinicom? A gentleman from the Natural History Museum rang me up and said he was coming down to interview me. The creature's neck was, um, how long would you say? Ooh, about five, six feet, I'd say. And the body, what size was that? Twenty feet at least. Are you sure about that? Sure as I am of anything. Do you think you could draw it for me? Mm. In another room was John Cock. He also drew what he'd seen. He drew his. When he brought his back, he said, well, they're the same. You've drawn it before. He said, we haven't drawn it before at all. Because that's what we saw. And then he brought out this book with all these things in it, prehistoric monsters and all the other. He said, pick out one you think you saw. That's it, definitely. No doubt about it. Hmm. Well, what is it? It's a plesiosaur. It's been extinct for over 60 million years. You can't possibly have seen one of those. That is what I saw. Same head, same neck, same body. I think what you saw was a leatherback turtle. I'm telling you, that was no turtle. Now, I have sailed them waters for 40 years, and I have seen turtles and whales and giant squid, but this creature were nothing like I've ever clapped eyes on. I said, you come all the way down from London to tell me what we saw. I said, I'm, I'm telling you what we saw. For Dr. Carl Schuker, the most credible explanation remains the plesiosaur. I don't think that it can be explained away by otters, by the, the traditional explanations. Radical or not, the, the best fit uh, in relation to animals that we know existed at one time or another in the history of our planet, the best fit is the plesiosaur. But critics say if plesiosaurs do exist in Cornish waters, you'd expect to find their corpses washed up on the beaches. Dr. Schuker has an explanation for why no carcasses have ever been found. 
Please, these are well known for swallowing stones. They did this for buoyancy purposes. So, needless to say, an, a large animal that has quite a, a fair few heavy stones inside it, when it dies, it's going to do one thing, and that's sink. Most experts believe that the sightings alone cannot prove plesiosaurs have survived to the present day. But for the witnesses, the evidence of their own eyes is proof enough. If the story of the Loch Ness Monster is anything to go by, the mystery of Morgwa will not go away. But anyone who tries to find the creature will have to search a much larger area than a loch. Morgwa, it seems, could be roaming thousands of square miles of ocean.